Hello, my name is Ryan Majidimer, and welcome to the June Power BI update. We've got a lot of exciting updates for you this month. If you want to learn about all those updates, read them, if you will, and check out links to docs, all sorts of cool stuff like that. I highly recommend you check out our blog. You can find a link to the blog in the description of this video. Plus, something new and exciting, going forward in each of these videos, we will be doing a member spotlight. And by member, I of course mean community member, and by community, I mean the Power BI community. Dare I say fabric community? Check out the end of this video. For that, I highly recommend you watch all the way through. So that's a little bit of a treat at the end of all of this excitement. Well, let's get started. In the reporting section, we're pleased to announce the preview of a new card visual feature. You can now display multiple cards by dragging and dropping all fields or measures into the data field well. Check out the blog to read more about this special feature and some surprises that are being released with this new visual. Next up is the OneLake Data Hub in Power BI Desktop. The Data Hub in Power BI Desktop serves as a central location for discovering and reusing data. With the recent Fabric release, we're excited to announce the rebranding of the Data Hub as OneLake Data Hub. OneLake Data Hub in Power BI Desktop allows you to reuse existing Fabric items and create your own data sets and reports on top of them. It supports the following items, data warehouses, lake houses, their related SQL endpoints, data marts, and data sets. Next, we have some updates to the on object interaction in preview. This month, we released the ability to reattach the build menu as a pane. We're going to hand it over to Roseanne for a demonstration. We're excited to show you the latest improvements for on object for June. This month, we bring you the top requested improvement the ability to reattach the build menu as a pane. You can do this one of three ways. The first, by simply using the chevron menu to move it to the pane switcher, and you can do the inverse to move it back to the visual. You can also reattach the build menu through the view ribbon. Here, we also give you the option to have the pane switcher always shown. So even if you have only one pane open, the switcher is still available. And here I can attach the build menu from here. Or the third way is to go through the options menu by using these two preference settings. This will be stored across your reports, so every time you launch desktop, this will be remembered. We have even more customization coming to the pane switcher next month, so stay tuned. The other improvement I'd like to show you is we've added conditional formatting from the mini toolbars. Now I can set conditional formatting simply by choosing the columns, setting the conditions, and clicking apply. This all saves me a trip to the format pane. Thanks, Roseanne. Moving on to data connectivity and preparation. First, we're excited to announce the addition of a new feature for tenant admins. With the visual queue in the admin portal, Admins can now easily identify and manage new settings within their Power BI environment. Changes within the tenant setting page in the admin portal are tagged with the new icon to help admins discover new settings. Second, we're introducing the Tenant Admin Settings API. With this new API, you can effortlessly retrieve and access a wide range of administrative settings programmatically. In service, you can now embed visuals from Power BI organizational apps into your PowerPoint presentation. All you need is the link to the visual you want to embed. Next up, we have updates to the preview feature that allow you to edit your data model in the service. Now, any changes you make to layouts in the service will be saved for future sessions. We're pleased to introduce a new admin setting to the control email subscriptions for B2B guest users. B2B guest users can create their own email subscriptions and be included as recipients of email subscriptions. 
The new admin monitoring workspace, now in public preview, delivers curated insights to help you better manage, administer, and govern your tenant. We'll hand it over to Bogdan for a demo. The new admin monitoring workspace is a Microsoft curated workspace targeted to the needs of tenant admins. It comes pre-populated with reports and datasets, and we're going to be focusing on the new feature usage and adoption report for this demo. Keep in mind that as we roll out more Fabric capabilities, this workspace will include value-added Fabric artifacts on an ongoing basis. You can't add or remove artifacts here, but you can, for instance, use the included datasets to build your own reports. As a tenant admin, you can also share this workspace with others in your organization as you would any other workspace. So let's take a look at the new feature usage and adoption report. This report comes pre-populated with 30 days worth of data and gives you a bird's eye view of activities on the tenant across time. You can zero in on a specific date range here, or you can use the familiar filter interface on the right to filter along a range of parameters. You can also filter directly from within the report UI. You can right click to drill through on this category or drill down in this case to break it down into its constituent elements. We can continue the analysis here, or we can move over to this visualization on the right, which correlates the most active users in this, with this category. Here we see this user's activities are exponentially higher than other users, and perhaps we'd like to learn more about what they're doing across the tenant. To do that, we can drill through the activity details. This is going to give us a contextual view of this user's activities across the tenant, correlated with these parameters. We can do even more interesting things on the analysis pane. I'm going to reset this to the default view. And we see the total activities are represented by this bar here, giving us the opportunity to build out an analysis tree any way we'd like. We have a number of choices here in which direction we'd like to take it. In this case, I'm going to choose item type. I'm going to select report here. And again, I have any of a number of choices where I'd like to go. I'm going to select action, and I'll go with the top ranking one again. And from here, I'm going to select activity name, and let's end up with users again. So I'm going to select users. So you can see that this is a very flexible way to build out an analysis tree to support any of a number of scenarios. Thanks, Bogdan. We've published a new series of auditing and monitoring articles to the Power BI implementation planning guidance. Check out the blog for links to the implementation planning articles. In Embedded, first, we have now added a new demo experience to the Power BI Embedded Playground. Gnome will demo this for us. The Power BI Embedded Playground is a great place to get started with Power BI Embedded. You can view your own reports and interact with them to explore the capabilities of Power BI Embedded. We're taking this one step further with a new Power BI Embedded Demo. In the Embedded Demo experience, you can generate code for any of your reports to instantly view them in your own application. This means that you can create a quick and easy proof of concept for the look and feel of your report in your own application, all within seconds and without having to develop any part of your Power BI Embedded solution yet. To get started, simply select a report. You can use our sample or select one of your own reports. To select your own report, enter the workspace and then select the report you'd like to embed. Once you click embed, the demo code will be generated for you. You can expand the code to view the full code. And then you can go ahead and copy the code to your clipboard. From here, all that's left to do is paste the code in your own application in the place where you'd like to see the embedded report. And just like that, once you load your application, your embedded report will appear there. You can add additional styling to the iframe in your application's code and play around with how it looks. Once you're happy with what you see and you're ready to get started developing your embedded solution, you can follow the instructions on the iframe or you can view the resources in the experience in the playground. Thanks, Gnome. Next up, you can create Power BI reports instantly in Jupyter Notebooks. Gnome will also demo this for us.
In this demo, I will show you how I can leverage Power BI Embedded to easily gain insights on data in my Jupyter Notebook. I'll start off by importing the Power BI Client Library, as well as any other library that might be relevant for me in my notebook. Once I've done that, I can authenticate to Power BI with one of the available methods. In this demo, I'm using the device code login authentication method. I will copy the code and open the link provided. And here I will be prompted to enter the code and sign in. Once I've done that, I can close this window and return to my notebook. The next step would be to import and process my data. In this demo, I will import a financial sample CSV. As you can see, the data frame has multiple columns and lots of information. I'll want to remove some of the unnecessary columns and also limit this to only products with over 1,000 units sold. I'll also create another column indicating whether a discount has been applied or not. Here below, you can see the updated data frame. Once I'm ready to visualize and analyze my data, I can use the Power BI integration. To do so, I'll start by creating an instance of a Power BI report. As you can see here, I need to pass in my data frame, which I just modified, and the authentication objects I obtained earlier. Then I can render this report. As you can see, the output is a Power BI Quick Create experience. Within just a few seconds, an auto-generated report will be created for me. Just like that, I can instantly visualize my data and even have some textual insights about it. I can take this one step further and control which data columns are part of the report. For example, I'm not interested in seeing the split by product, but rather by segment. So I'll go ahead and change the data columns. My report and insights will be instantly updated. I can also customize any of the visuals. For example, I can turn this chart into a pie chart. Once I'm happy with this report and I've gained the insights I was looking for about my data, I can continue my work in my notebook. Another thing I can do is save this report to Power BI. That way, I can share it with users across my organization and refer to it later. Once I click on Save, I will be prompted to enter a name for my report and select a workspace to save it to. From here, I can open the report in Power BI and perform all the actions I'm familiar with, such as editing and sharing the report. If I want to show this report again in my notebook or use it in any other notebook, I can easily do this with the existing Power BI Embedded and Jupyter Notebooks integration. All I need to do is obtain the group ID and report ID and copy those into my notebook. With these parameters and the authentication objects I used before, I can create an instance of a Power BI report and load it in my notebook. Moving on to developers, Power BI Desktop Developer Mode is now in public preview. Power BI Desktop Developer Mode brings pro developer experiences directly into Power BI Desktop, enabling de developer efficiency and capabilities like source control, text editor support, and programmatic generation of content. Let's watch a demo. Now, with Power BI Desktop, you not only have the option to save your work as a single PBIX file, but you can also save it as a Power BI project. A new save option that will make Desktop save your development into a folder, finally unblocking source control and collaboration using Power BI Desktop. Let me show you. From an open Power BI report, you can now go to File, Save As and select the Power BI Project Save As type. And Desktop from now on will save all your development into a folder. This is a folder with a Power BI project in it. It contains one folder for the dataset and one folder for the report. So if I go back to Desktop and I create a new measure, Desktop will save the new measure in the model definition within the dataset folder. And I can use Tablet Editor, the open source community tool, to open the model definition file and view the measure created on Desktop. Now let's do the opposite. Let's create something in Tablet Editor and see it reflected in Desktop. Let's duplicate the product table and save. If I go back to Desktop, I don't see that new table. 
because desktop is not aware from outside changes. So I need to close desktop and reopen the Power BI project file. And I'll be able to see the new table created in Tableau Editor. But notice something interesting. If I go to the data view, all my tables have data. But if I click on that new table, that new table doesn't have data. Why? Because Tableau Editor didn't refresh any data, just created a new table definition. But notice also something. So Power BI Desktop, because it's working in a Power BI project, detected that I have some tables that have incomplete or no data and, and is asking me to refresh now. And if I click refresh, it's also smart enough to only refresh that single new table that I created from Tableau Editor. And now that Power BI Desktop can work on a folder, I can initialize a Git repo and enable version control and collaboration with other developers. And I can do that using Visual Studio Code. From the Power BI project folder, I can open Visual Studio Code and initialize a new Git repo. And from now on, because I have a Git enabled folder, I can track and version control any change I make in desktop. For example, if I change a measure, I can easily track that change in Git. And Visual Studio Code will show me that I have a file div in my model BIM file. Now to enable collaboration, I need to use uh, Azure DevOps. So I can go to Azure DevOps and I can create a new repo. Let's call it dev mode. And I need to configure this remote git repo URL back in Visual Studio Code. And publish my branch. And Visual Studio Code will take care of syncing my local development into Azure DevOps. And now I can enable collaboration and have multiple developers working on the same Power BI project using Power BI Desktop. They only need to be connected to the same Azure DevOps repo. But we didn't stop here. We will also enable you to sync a Git repo to a workspace in the service. And for that, you need to go to the workspace settings where you will find an option called Git integration that will allow you to connect the workspace to an Azure DevOps Git repo. So let's select the Azure DevOps organization and the project, the repo and branch we were working and click on connect and sync. And just like that, we just enabled a two-way synchronization between the workspace and a Git repo in Azure DevOps. It will start by synchronizing the content from Git into the workspace creating a report and a dataset artifact. I must refresh the dataset because in Git there is no data, only metadata and code. And I can also make changes in the workspace and synchronize those changes into Git. Let's make a small edit in the sales report and change the background color of this card into red and save. And also, let's create a new report and create a very simple report and save it to the workspace. And I want you to notice two things. The first one is this indication in the toolbar in the source control where I can click and I can see changes that are from the workspace into Git. And I can see that I have a modification in the sales report and I have a new report called report from service. I can click on both changes. I can undo these changes if I want, but I'm not going to do that. I will commit and I will provide a message. And let's hit commit. And the service is going to synchronize both changes into Git. And you can also notice in the status bar I can, I can see that my workspace is connected to the main branch. I can see the last time it sync, and I also have a link that will take me to the commit. So where I can click and this will take me into Azure DevOps and it will tell me exactly what have changed. Now let's go back to my local machine. If I go back to my local folder, I can only see 
the sales data set and the sales report. I don't have the report that was created in the service because this is still in Git. But I can open Visual Studio Code and I can do a Git pull. And Visual Studio Code will sync the content from Git into my local machine. And if I go back to the folder, I can see that I have my new report created from the service. And of course, I can open this back in desktop. And I will be able to see the change that I did in the service, the switch of the background color. But I can also open the report directly by navigating to the report folder and opening the definition file. And Power BI Desktop will open the service created report for local authoring, but this time connected to the local dataset that will also be in full edit mode, where I can view and edit measures, transform data, or even go to the data view to explore the dataset data. And this is it. The new Power BI project save option that together with Git integration will unblock collaboration, source control, and automatic deployment into your Power BI project. Thank you. Next up, we have some exciting new updates for you in the visualization section. New visuals available for you on AppSource this month include SW Table, Horizontal Bullet Chart with Label, InnoFalls, Sunburst Chart by PowerViz, Writeback Grid, Archaeologic Floor Plan Visualization, Multi-Line Chart with Tooltips, Daytellers Bar of Pi, We Write Service. Updated visuals for this month are Drill Down Waterfall Pro, Power Gantt by Nova Silva, Advanced Linear Gauge by Mac Software. And now we've arrived at the Community Spotlight. Each month, we're going to be selecting a member of the Power BI community who has gone above and beyond in the last month or so. And uh, what's the criteria? Well, the criteria is that uh, you participate in all the sorts of community events we have. You may be responding to people's questions, helping out other people in the community, creating content of your own. You may be amplifying our content, all sorts of fun stuff like that. I assure you there's no rigid standards or anything like that. We almost pull them out of a hat but not quite literally. And before, rather without further ado, the member of the month is Care Cole. I hope I'm not butchering that username. I think it's probably a good guess at the pronunciation. At any rate, this user has been a super user, won a category in the Charticulator Challenge, has been a spotlight contributor for the data story of the month and was a finalist in the t-shirt design challenge for 2023. And that's all for this month. Who will be in the community member spotlight next month? Will it be you? Only time will tell. Tell us in the comments what your favorite feature was this month or even better, have you tried any of those new fangled fabric features yet? I would love to hear about it. As always, let us know your feedback in the comments for this video. I love reading all the comments. If you have any feedback on how you'd like us to run these videos, run the blogs, any other things that you might have in your mind, please let us know. I would love to hear about it. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.